Okay, after all that, now it's finally time to search. Um, I'm starting from the library homepage, and I'm going to work on the out-of-hospital intubation question, um, which is a question for a paramedic sort of um, topic. So I'm going to go to my subject guides tab here, pop open the list, and go to the P's for paramedic science. Up here on the left, I can see some recommended databases for paramedic science. Um, PubMed's a great one. I am going to start in the third one down, which is called CINAHL, which is an allied health database for um, nursing and paramedics, as well as speech language pathology, physical therapy, and occupational therapy. So everybody will eventually be checking out this CINAHL database in addition to PubMed. So I think it's a good place to start. So. I'm going to go ahead and hit send all. Oops, it did not work. And now I'm in the, I, when I hit it, I'm going to come to this screen which just has a search bar up at the top here. But as I said, as I showed you, if you attempt to combine your ands and ors in, in one search bar, um, you have a good possibility that something will get sort of misunderstood or messed up. So always, 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 when you search a library database, look for the advanced search form. Hit advanced search and you will come to a page with these boxes, just like I showed you in the worksheet, which will allow you to copy and paste your OR strings, one concept per box, to keep your search really organized and without the possibility of any, like, mistake. So I'm going to grab the strings that I already made, and I want to, um, a, to, you know, just attract your attention to the fact that this three-word phrase, out of hospital, has three very common words. So I've enclosed it in double quotes to make sure it's searched as a phrase. So I'm just going to grab this guy and paste it in the first box. This is one concept per box. Grab the second string. Intubation. And then grab the third string. You really only want to start with two or three concepts at a time. I'm starting with three concepts. I need to know that this is about intubations for cardiac arrest patients that occur pre-hospital or out of hospital. So now I'm saying any one of these words, and any one of these words, and any one of these words, and I'm interested in that result. I'll run the search in CINAHL. One important thing for you to know about CINAHL is that when you start to take a look at your results, and here you can see we have almost 600 results, is that the sorting order will be the newest record first. It's not necessarily the best for you. You would want to open this menu and change this to the most relevant result first. This is based on the keyword um, frequency and where it appears, right? So here we have uh, out of hospital cardiac arrest, da da da. Um, the, the next thing I'm going to do though, because I really don't want to see stuff that's old, like this one's from 2009, it's just, that's just too old. What I'm going to do is look at the goodies here on the left side of the screen and take advantage of this date limiter. So I can set my starting date as 2015 and find only research done within the past five years. So now when you see the number of search results, we're down to 240. We've gotten rid of a lot of old records, right? Um, well, let's take a look at what we've got here. Some out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, an extraglottic device, pediatric airway management. Airway management is a phrase that I did not know about, but it relates to intubation. So that might be something I want to file away for later. I'm not seeing a ton of stuff that I'm super excited about. I'm seeing some pre-hospital airway management. Oh yeah, here, here, influence of pre-hospital airway management on neurological outcome. This is 2019, so that's actually pretty good. So maybe I'll take a quick look at this. If I click on it, I'll read the abstract. 
Usually the last few sentences of the abstract will tell you what they found. Um, this is talking about SGA versus ETI. This is endotracheal intubation. SGA, let's see what that means, or oh, a supraglottic airway. Um, okay, so either one seems good, but um, this is actually comparing the two things. So I was interested in survival rates. What I may choose to do now is refine my search. And one of the things I can do is I like to, if I'm not getting stuff that I like to see right away, I get very impatient. And so what you can come up here and do is open this field, search and force a word to appear in the title, which makes it more likely that it's going to be relevant to your search. Yeah, airway management endotracheal intubation. This is going to be a good one to look at. Pre and you can see there are subject terms down here. Now what these subjects are, are controlled vocabulary. They're always applied in the same way and they're applied by a human indexer. So what I, the other trick I have is if I come down here, I can take a look at subjects that are um, uh, included in these records and actually they're all quite relevant. I have 54 records here about intubation and 23 have been coded about heart arrest intubation on trial 2015 that might be interesting to read yeah a lot of these are going to be interesting to read management yeah okay improve survival so another thing we could do is we could add the concept of survival or survival rate we could even do that pre-hospital endotracheal intubation and survival after out-of-hospital cardiac arrest 2016 so this is fairly um, relevant let's see here survival outcomes in this Korean nationwide population-based OHCA cohort OHCA means out-of-hospital cardiac arrest Neurologically favorable survival to hospital discharge rates was significantly higher among pa patients who received endotracheal uh, intubation than those receiving BVM or SGA, the supraglottal. So this is actually pretty good. The search went pretty well. Um, but you can see that I had to make a number of adjustments along the way. I found new keywords. Um, I added an additional concept. And that's sort of how searching goes, right? So the next thing we need to talk about and we need to try is I'm going to go back to the library homepage. Um, let me just get back to our paramedic subject guide here. We need to use this database called PubMed, which is a little bit of a, a scary and mysterious database. It was recently updated, so it doesn't use work the way that it used to and um, a lot of health sciences professionals are getting thrown by that. So you're actually in a good position learning this new interface for the first time. I'm just going to close the COVID message here. Now once again at a database the always, thing we always always want always want to look for is the advanced search form. And here I can see the advanced search form. So I'm going to click this guy now let's try our folic acid search in PubMed because that's a very medical, medically um, related search. So I'm going to start with my heart disease term. And you'll notice right away the PubMed search builder looks very different than the library database CINAHL search, search field. They used to look the same, but the new PubMed works differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first OR string. These are all my synonyms. This is the concept of heart disease. And when I've got it in here, I'm going to hit the Add button. And what that will do is something not very exciting at first. It took my search terms and it put them down here in what's called the query box. This is where PubMed is building a more complex query on my behalf. So the next thing I'm going to need to do is, you know, in this question, the patient was interested in maybe folic acid, maybe vitamin D. Um, 
I'm going to start with two concepts. I'm just going to look for folic acid and heart disease, and I'm going to see how many results come up. Now I'm, I'm, I'm going to run the search. I'm going to get 5,000 results. I'll notice that the first one, um, and we are, by the way, sorted by best match, which means we're already sorted by relevance. But we can use the date slider here to make sure we're only seeing stuff from the last, let's say, last 10 years. When this updates, you see we went from 5,000 to 2,000 results. Right? And we can scroll down and we can see this guy, the effect of folic acid in patients with cardiovascular disease. Well, this is actually not pre prevent prevention. This is patients with cardiovascular disease, so that's not quite right. So as we scroll down here further, we're seeing a lot more stuff than we really need. Okay. So we could take a risk here. Um, I'm going to hit advanced again. So I'm going to go back to the advanced search form. You can see that my history of all my searches is being maintained down here. So we started with 5,000. But then when I added the filter for the last 10 years, we went down to 2,000. Now what I want to do is actually edit this query and add another keyword term to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the three dots next to action. I'm going to hit add query. I'm going slow because you wouldn't necessarily know where to click. So it's these three dots here in the actions column of the search history menu going to add my query and all of the you know query is going even the date limiter what I'm going to do now as I have the option of doing my prevent with my star here and then so I'm going to add that with the and operator because I want to narrow my search further and and always makes your results set smaller it always makes your search more specific so I'm going to run this search and I'm going to see, okay, effects, efficacy of folic acid in primary prevention of stroke among adults with hypertension. Okay, so now we're out of talking about, um, out of talking about cardiovascular disease. Let's see what else do we have going on here. Folic acid and diseases in general. Here, now number six, this is quite interesting. Folic acid supplementation and the risk of cardiovascular diseases, a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. Meta-analysis is a very good thing to see. It is very high quality evidence. It means it's taken a bunch of randomized controlled trials and statistically analyzed them to get an overall conclusion. If I hit this guy, let's see, this is 2016, so still within our, our preferred last five years time period. Our meta-analysis indicated a 10% lower risk of stroke and a 4% lower risk of overall CD, CVD with folic acid supplementation. A greater benefit was observed among participants that might have lower plasma folate levels, so they're already folic uh, sort of deficient. But notice that folic acid supplementation had no significant risk on, uh, effect on the risk of coronary heart disease. So all very interesting. Um, what we can do now, since we also have to answer the same question for vitamin D, we can try to build our search all over again. So I'm going to just copy this guy, copy, add this. I'm going to do vitamin D or cholecalciferol, just make sure. I spelled that correctly. Yeah. And I'm going to hit and, and that, see, it's building my query for me. And it put and in between the two parentheses um, or strings. Let's see how many we get with this. 7,000 results. So this is actually really well studied. Um, da -da -da. Good to. And prevent. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so many good results. One of the things I can do over here, always take a look at the goodies 
here on the left, I can check this box for that really good kind of evidence, that meta-analysis, and now I'm down to 69. And I can see in 2019, there's a meta-analysis about vitamin D and cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. Based on a conservative benefit risk management approach, vitamin D doses beyond the nutritionally recommended amounts of 600 to 800 IE daily currently cannot be advised for the prevention of CVD events. So there you have it. That's sort of a, a basic search um, approach. Trying things, adding things, taking things away, using filters. Now there's something else going on with PubMed and it's quite important for you to know actually that PubMed is a database that's trying very hard to help you behind the scenes. I am just going to click this little down arrow next to one of these search strings and I want you to see that it took this short little search and it added some terms to your search. For heart disease, the first thing it added was heart diseases as what's called a mesh term. It put a little tag that said mesh term. And then we have no idea what this means at this point. Mesh stands for medical subject heading. And I'm going to talk about this in another video. Now what I'd like you to do is try it for yourself. Go ahead, um, open up your subject guide, try various different databases, um, run the strings that you came up with, play around and see how it goes. So everybody's subject guide will have a few different library databases depending on their subject area. But another one that everyone will have is the Cochrane Library. Cochrane is an organization that has very rigorous standards for systematic reviews, which is a high quality type of evidence that involves taking multiple randomized controlled trials and doing um, a review of them to determine the overall conclusion. On the Cochrane website, you'll notice that they have a search bar so you can search their systematic review database, but always, always go to the advanced search. Cochrane's database of systematic reviews is much smaller than the other library databases. Uh, by necessity, Cochrane reviews are very high quality evidence, but they take a long time to produce. So just naturally there are going to be fewer of them than searching all of the medical literature. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try our cardiovascular search. So let me paste in my first OR list of terms and then I'm going to use the plus button here to add a few more terms. I think that for our patient who's asking about supplements, not only should we search, you know, folic acid and vitamin D, but let's just search on prevention of cardiovascular disease and supplement rather that to do a more general search because this is a smaller database and also we can take a look at some of the other things that maybe she should consider instead of um, you know vitamin D or instead of folic acid. So if I run this search 127 results as I can see, everything's sorted by relevance, and I can do a custom date range to get rid of sort of the older stuff if I wish. Dietary fiber for the prevention of cardiovascular disease. Maybe it's a better idea for me to advise my patient to just start up increasing her daily dietary fiber in intake instead of bothering with supplements. So if we click this, you can see background, we can just scroll through the headings, um, author's conclusions, you know, studies were too short term, so the RCT, the um, systematic analysis had some problems, let's see, yeah, increased fiber intake, reduced total cholesterol, so there's still a need for more research here is the conclusion. So let's take a look at some other stuff. What about vitamin C supplementation or Tai Chi prevention of cardiovascular disease? How about selenium or vitamin K or a Mediterranean style diet? Let's see what evidence is there for that. That's interesting.
Oh, this is about the PREDIMED trial, which was retracted. Interesting. There's so much you can learn from reading um, Cochrane reviews. So, uncertainty regarding the effects of the Mediterranean-style diet. So here you have at your fingertips some really high quality evidence that you can come in, just quickly take a look at the conclusions, and feel confident with this, um, with this level of evidence that we're looking at here. And I know we haven't talked about systematic reviews yet, but we will in an upcoming video.